Hey guys, it's Zipporah from Truths with Z, and today I'm going to be talking about the truth about revival. And so, Lord, please speak through my mouth and let your will be done in this session. I pray that you would help me to understand what you want me to understand and the people watching to understand what you want them to understand. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> so revival often is talked about these days, especially after the Asbury revival and then the kind of revivals different popped up all over the place. But I feel like we all kind of missed something. There was a key aspect of what true revival is that a lot of believers missed and it ended up what ended up happening just meant was really just like a long worship session, a super long worship session that didn't end and maybe people gave testimonies in between then and I have no doubt that God worked miracle signs and wonders at those events and people actually uh, found God and different things but I also feel like those types of events where the truth where true revival does not happen people end up just getting a very high you know dopamine and then they just go back to their regular life and they end up going back to doing what they're usually doing and so I want to talk about what real revival is what is the truth so here we are this is the definition of revival let's see what it says here it says first of all it's a noun it says an improvement in condition or strength of something then the second one says an instance of something becoming popular active or important again important again something an instance something becoming popular active or important again i feel like this one is very important and one of the synonyms here is restoration resurrection rebirth these things are important an awakening and so what the bible and i'm going to get into scripture what the bible refers to revival is is when the people recognize that they were lacking this was an instance where the god's law became popular where following god was active and important again and it usually happened after a time where the israelites had drifted away from god and they decided to stop keeping his commandments and they decided to stop following him and stop doing what he said and then they started to do everything against what he said and then there became a point in time where either the holy spirit was speaking to them as individuals or god sent his prophets to tell them hey what you're doing is wrong and so then the people were urged or pushed to repentance and repentance then came god's forgiveness then came and then revival happened when god's law became popular active and important again into the lives of god's children and they were now blessed and so let's go into the word of god let's go into the word of god so we're in Ezra chapter 9, and we're going to read 9 and 10. I'm probably not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read the most important part. So it says here, four marriages, Ezra chapter 9. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, this is Ezra, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. And so what, let's just break down verse number one verse number one gave us very much all the background information that we really needed and so what's happening right now is Ezra is the prophet or the leader right now I guess the spiritual leader of Israel at this point in time and so if you don't know about the spiritual leaders the spiritual leaders were the ones who were privy to everything really it was their duty to be privy to everything they were pretty much the communication between Israel and God and God often used these prophets and leaders to guide Israel into the next phase God used them to give them warnings to give them blessings to give them encouragement all kinds of things and the leaders were really they needed to know what was going on in Israel so that they can act accordingly in their prayer life in their spiritual life and with God and so right here we see that the people of Israel have not separated themselves from God. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The people of Israel have not separated themselves from the other nations, which is listed here, the Canaanites, the Hittites, all these individuals that God has instructed them to separate themselves from. If you're familiar with the scripture where God says, come out from among them and be separate. Why did God want them to come out from among them and be separate? Because he had a different plan and purpose for their lives other than what the other nations were doing. Now, if you recall in the time of, in the book of Exodus, the Egyptians were doing a lot of witchcraft and sorcery that was not like God. And after a while of the, the Israelites being slaves in Egypt, they often forgot God's law they forgot what God had instructed them to do and so God wanted them to come out of Egypt so that they would worship him in spirit and in truth but 
they have continuously decided we're out of Egypt, but we're still going to be in Egypt spiritually by going back and going to other gods that are not the true and living God. And so let's go to verse two. It says, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of these lands. Yea, the hands of the princes and rulers hath been cheap in this trespass. And so what verse two is telling us is that we're getting a deeper understanding of what exactly is going on. So verse one says that they have done all according to their abominations, meaning they have just given in to all the temptation that they've ever wanted. The things that they, the nasty things that they've imagined in their mind, they're doing it. They're active in their, their nasty doing, okay? And so, and then verse two gives us deeper understanding of what exactly it is that they're doing. They are having sex and marrying the daughters and the sons of other nations that God told them not to. And God uses this very interesting term here that they have, so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves from the peoples of those lands. The Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, Amorites. So God did not want the seed to be mixed. He called it Holy Seed. That's interesting. He called it Holy Seed that was not supposed to be mixed with the other nations. Let's proceed with verse 3. And actually, verse 2 gives us even deeper information. And God says here that it's the chief, the rule, the princes and rulers have been the chief in this trespass. Verse 1 told us that it was also the priests and the Levites who were also doing it. So it's the leaders. It's the leaders of the tribes. It's the princes and the rulers of the different tribes. It's the Levites. And the Levites, if you know the Levites, were supposed to be God's priests. They were supposed to... Uh, be giving themselves to to God and doing His work in the sanctuary, and so uh, if a if a man if a priest was in the sanctuary had touched the ark or touched any of the sacrifices and was living a life of sin, he would have died. I imagine a lot of individuals died at this time. Let's proceed to verse three. It says, "And when I heard this thing, Ezra, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off my oh, plucked the hair off my head. Okay, he was really going deep, and off my beard, and sat down astoned, astonished. Okay, we're gonna proceed. I I I, I need to work on that word." <laughs> <laughs> then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of God, of words at the words of the God of Israel, because of the transgression of those that had been carried away, and I astound until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I arose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord. Ah, uh, hold on. We're going to go to verse 10 and it says, And now, our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servant the prophet, saying, The land unto which ye go possess, it is a, an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands and their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanliness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the eat the, and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. So I just want to pause here because God has instructed them not to commingle themselves and literally to be separate from the people of the land. Why? It says because they are they're unclean. They do things that are unclean. They eat things that are unclean. Their actions and their thoughts are abominations unto God. And so God said, don't go mingle with those people. Don't go with mingle with those people. Maybe they're a mile away from you. They're a quick distance from you. Do not go mingle with those people. And do not go and covet their wealth and covet their peace and covet the things that they have. Because I'm giving you all that you need. I'm giving you the good of the land. And if you keep following my commandments, then you'll have great inheritance to leave for your children forever. And guess what the people said? No, thank you, Lord. And it says, at, verse 13 says, And after all this has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. So God didn't really punish them. At this time, they didn't, they're not suffering because of the abominations that they have completed. They didn't. And so it says here, and hast given us deliverance at this, should we break again the commandments and, and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? So Ezra is saying, like, what's going on? What's happening? Why would they, God gave them all these details, and then they would go and, and be commingled and coexist, really, with the wickedness 
of the other nations that God specifically instructed them not to be a part of. And so I'm going to go into chapter 10 in verse 2. Part 2. <laughs> chapter 10 in part 2. 